Now, on Spotlight on Education, what Superintendent Robert Avoso was pushing for as he addressed a Senate panel. Wisdom and insight from a noted author who's helping young writers find their voice. And the program that's empowering young women, giving them confidence and a positive sense of self. Welcome to Spotlight on Education. I'm Claudia Shea. I'm Rick Blackwell. Our top story, a major push for teachers. Superintendent Robert Avosa and a panel of other superintendents traveled to the state capitol to offer guidance to lawmakers. We're here to talk about the issue of, of teacher compensation. The Florida Senate is looking for ways to attract and retain teachers. Dr. Avosa and other superintendents shared insight and suggestions with the Senate Appropriations Committee. We need to have a real conversation about how do we make teaching an attractive profession where people have a voice and, and have an opportunity to really engage. We know that leadership matters. 50% of the problem really is not a money problem, but 50% is. As a follow-up to this oral presentation, the Senate panel asked the superintendents to submit written recommendations which lawmakers will consider before amending current legislation. We have some record-breaking numbers to share with you. And this is really all good news for college-ready seniors. The district's annual historically black college and university and Hispanic-serving institution recruitment tour has shattered previous records. Representatives from 21 colleges and universities met with nearly 900 students during the two-day event. Students were offered more than 1,300 on-the-spot admissions and collectively more than $8 million in scholarships. 19 aspiring teachers also signed contracts with the school district, meaning once they earn their college degree, they will return to the district to teach. Bigger and better than ever. Okay, it's that time again. The Florida Prepaid College Board's open enrollment period has begun. This is the only time each year that families can purchase one of the Florida Prepaid College Board's five prepaid tuition plans and prepaid dormitory plans. Open enrollment began October 15, 2016 and runs through February 28, 2017. Prices this year start as low as $47 a month. The Florida Prepaid College Board encourages families to take these weeks to learn more about college costs and the options available to start saving now and avoid debt later. The Florida Prepaid College Board makes the process of saving for college more affordable by allowing families to prepay on a monthly or lump sum basis. The future cost of college tuition and specified fees. Now, the younger your child, the more years you have to save and the lower the monthly payment. For more information about how to start saving today, visit MyFloridaPrepaid.com. And speaking of college education, this is a really exciting and, yes, nerve-wracking time for seniors who are applying to colleges. Recently, hundreds of students participated in a day-long workshop that focused on how to get into a school and how to succeed in college. More than a face in the crowd, he's a miracle. His name is Miracle Ejidiki. Well, my mom, she said that at birth, she saw a plan for me to do something good with my life. Born in Nigeria, he arrived in the U.S. when he was six. Now a straight-A student at Forest Hill High School. The miracle story continues at this college readiness summit in Boca Raton. Going to college would be a miracle for me because it'll allow me to gain opportunities to grow and be, be more knowledgeable about myself. And then hopefully with the knowledge I'm able to receive in college, I might be able to go give back to my community and to go give back to my country in Nigeria as, also as time progresses. Miracle joined 350 students from eight Palm Beach County high schools at the Safe Schools Institute for this conference titled College Bound, College Ready. Hopefully you are all walking away with the information needed to be enthusiastic about going to college. In this session, current college students talk about getting into a university and they open up about concerns they had once they arrived on campus. Going to a school where I didn't know anybody, it was really difficult at first to try to make friends. The insights of the panel are inspiring to many of these students. We have first generation students where their parents didn't go to college so we, they don't necessarily have someone at home to let them know the steps that it takes to get to college. So with this population of kids we try to make sure they're empowered with, every, empowered with all the information needed to be successful to get into school and to stay into school. Not just to be college bound but to be also college ready. 
The students also had a chance to get into smaller groups to discuss financial aid and scholarships. You are no longer eligible for that Bright Futures money if you didn't apply when you were a senior. They learned about college applications, the SAT and ACT tests, and how to earn college credits while attending high school. This summit helps the Palm Beach County School District achieve a goal outlined in the strategic plan to foster postgraduate success. We've worked really hard to build programs that give students opportunities to learn what they need to do to be able to be successful while they're in high school, but more importantly, after high school. The dream of college recorded on these banners. Students wrote down the school they hope to attend after graduation. I want to be able to do a lot of things for my family when I get older. So going to college is like a really big thing, a really step, a big step forward to get me closer to where I need to be and be able to help my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, and everybody I care about. After this summit, students will tell you they don't need a miracle to attend college. They know it just takes hard work and the support of people who really care. I gotta tell you, I was so inspired by Miracle. We wish him all the best. I can see why you're inspired. Great kid. Yeah, nice kid. All right, we wanna tell you about another amazing student and we highlighted him here on Spotlight. He is now in the spotlight in Tallahassee. He certainly is. Wellington High's Daniel Klein, seen here with Governor Rick Scott, received the Volunteer Florida Champion of Service Award during a meeting of the Florida Cabinet. We featured Daniel, if you remember, a couple of months ago as he was making a very special delivery at the Children's Hospital at Palms West. Daniel donates Legos to sick children through Bricks Busting Boredom, the nonprofit organization that he created. Every time you give a child Legos, you know, they can play with it once, twice, three times, and it's different every time they play with it. So far, Daniel has donated about 500 pounds of new and used Legos to children at hospitals throughout South Florida. Such an impressive young man. What a great program. Mm -hmm. Okay, so time now to highlight other students and staff making a big difference just like Daniel. We're doing that in this week's Honor Roll. First up, cheerleaders who deserve a cheer. The Palm Beach Central Varsity Cheerleaders won the state cheer and dance championships in Daytona on January 14th. Congratulations to the Bronco cheer team and their coach, Capella Flatterty. And meet a rising star, Boca Raton Community High School's Maggie Bow is a country singer on the move. She recently released her third album titled, Catch Me. AT&T recently awarded the Education Foundation of Palm Beach County $2,000 through a partnership with the Consortium of Florida Education Foundations. The money will be used for a collaborative STEM project between Point Siena Elementary, Dreyfus High School for the Arts, and Pasco Scientific. And UB Kinsey Palmview Elementary School extends a big thank you to the West Palm Beach Police Department and the Rotary Club of West Palm Beach. Officers read to students as part of the We Care program. An author of children's books also deserves accolades for the way she inspires a love of literacy. Edwige Danticoff's books are well known by students at Barton Elementary and recently students had an opportunity to learn from her during a creative writing workshop. We're going to do um, a writing exercise based on this prompt. Acclaimed author Edwige Dandicott prompts students at Barton Elementary School to become more creative writers. This workshop with students is designed to give children a real world experience. So what are the ways to bring in an author that is successful in writing and creative writing that we can, can share some tips and skills with them then that they can see it's not only sitting in front of a teacher listening, but we actually have someone out there that used those skills to be successful in life. Dan Ducott stresses success during her workshops and through the messages in the 12 books she has authored, including Mama's Nightingale. She shows you in this book um, that everything is possible. Like Dan Ducott, many students at Barton are from Haiti and relate to her writings. We're both from Haiti and some of the things in her books that really mostly happen in my country. That familiarity resonates with children and inspires them. If the fact that they could see a little bit of themselves in my book, it thrills me to no end because when I was their age, I was also looking for mirrors of myself in books. Dandicott's prompt during this workshop, make a prediction, what will you be when you grow up? Students eagerly put their thoughts to words with a goal of helping them appreciate the uniqueness of their experience, and the unique stories they have to tell and trusting in that 
and then giving them a few tips that have been helpful to me in terms of incorporating detail in what you're writing. A lesson in literacy, fostering a love of learning. And you know, Rick, this is actually the author's second visit to Bard in elementary in two years. So really, a lot of the kids feel like they know her very well. I know, it's always great when you can meet a real-life author like mm -hmm. that. Meanwhile, a welcome visit from the group Pinnacle Kids at South Grade Elementary. They surveyed teachers to find out what kind of school supplies were most in need. Then they delivered bags and bags of school supplies, along with more than 60 individual whiteboards for students. More than 100 books for the library, plus all sorts of STEM-related learning tools. Way to go, Pinnacle Kids. You know, we often hear that kids excel when they're engaged in a program that really captures their attention, something they're truly interested in. Exactly, and we found some students who are giving rave reviews to the Automotive Academy at Park Vista High School. There are roughly 200 students in the auto classes every year. They learn everything from changing tires and oil to working on brakes, electrical systems, and the mechanics of modern engines. Some students do it for fun, but others are planning to make it a career. I first got into the program when I was in ninth grade as a freshman. I got in because um, I have an interest in the automotive technologies program because I want to be able to work on my own car when I get into the real world. Oh yeah, this program's amazing. You learn a lot. You, it's better than any like going to gym class. It's this class will change you, sets you up for life. Other than all the other classes in high school. The program is certified by the National Automotive Technicians Education Foundation. Students in the academy learn academics and get this hands-on training. They can also earn ASE certification upon graduation. Okay, time now to meet the four secondary instructional superintendents inside the Palm Beach County School District. These experienced educators work tirelessly to improve instruction and help students achieve success. Consider them the boots on the ground, experienced educators rolling up their sleeves to make sure all students have access to the best education possible. Their focus are middle and high school students. Our very large school district divided in four, each with its own regional superintendent who leads their own team of administrators. Before we had transformation, we had district teams, we had area teams, now we have this one person who walks onto the campus and works not only with the principal but with the leadership team and they provide guidance and support on a regular basis, almost weekly. The four secondary instructional superintendents include Dr. Glenda Sheffield representing the South Region. Dr. Sheffield has been a principal at all three levels. On this day, she meets with her administrative team from Village Academy in Delray Beach. She is here to reinforce the pillars of effective instruction. This kind of work that you're doing in here is definitely going to take time to build. On the walls of this room, student data. Dr. Sheffield analyzes the numbers, changing what's not working and making sure teachers have the tools to succeed. If our students are not learning the way that we are teaching them, then we need to teach them the way that they learn. Howard Hepburn is well-versed in the special challenges facing students in our Western communities. He grew up in this area and went to the same schools he now leads. I just wanted to come back home to provide those same opportunities, to provide that same type of leadership and ensure that every kid out here has the same opportunity that I had or a better opportunity. Hepburn meets regularly with principals in his region to make sure they have everything they need to help students achieve their great potential. It's more than just a paycheck, it's a passion. Um, it's more than just a job, it's a love. Central Region Secondary Instructional Superintendent Dr. Jeff McKee supports a small portfolio of schools to ensure he has ample time to be on each campus on a regular basis. He's a former principal who knows the challenges facing school leaders. He says each school has unique needs and he's there to provide professional learning communities for teachers. His discussions with principals center around ways to improve bell to bell instruction, student conduct, and attendance. Our goal as educators is to make sure that we empower our students to become all they're capable of becoming. And very important in that process is to make sure that we also communicate to them that just as they are, they're worthy of all of our love, all of our support, all of our sacrifices that are necessary to lead them to that higher level. Dr. Joseph Lee, 
the secondary instructional superintendent from the North region comes from a long line of educators. He says there is nothing more rewarding than knowing you have made a difference in a student's life. I'm doing this because, you know, you, uh, you know, were, were a role model for me or, you know, you pushed me when I didn't want to be pushed. Dr. Lee likes to visit classrooms to ensure instruction is at a high level. It also allows him to examine where students and teachers may need additional resources. He examines data to ensure schools are working towards the long-term outcomes outlined in the strategic plan. I think what's great about the strategic plan, it provides us one common focus. And that focus for these educators is to improve instruction and help students achieve success. They're gonna value students first, they're gonna value teachers, and they're gonna value um, the relationship that they have with the principals in understanding how to support the school and the community and really getting down to the nitty gritty on the details of how do we get better. Growing strong with better scores, better grades, better students. The one thing that ties those four individuals, they have a passion for kids and education. That's fantastic. Doing great work. A lot more to come right here on Spotlight. Straight ahead, it's an all-time favorite organization. Named after an all-time favorite musical. How some young ladies are making a difference at Royal Palm Beach High School. Watch the Education Network for all your school news. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. On Comcast. Two, three, four. Welcome back to Spotlight. You know, young women at Royal Palm High School have started a new organization called My Fair Ladies. They're talented, smart, and proud students who are the leaders of tomorrow. Audrey Hepburn and Rex Harrison starred in My Fair Lady back in 1964. Christina Michelle and Jessica Morenci two of the stars of My Fair Ladies in 2017 at Royal Palm Beach High School. Jessica and Christina hitting all the right notes when it comes to this student organization that promotes women's empowerment. My Fair Ladies is a group of powerful women trying to make, this, make the women in this world more powerful than they already are. They gain physical power by attending this self-defense class mental power by organizing this conference that promotes strong women in our society, and emotional power through the development of close friendships. This group has made me a better person because a lot of times um, it's hard to find someone who's just like you going through some things, and especially if it's another girl. 50 students make up My Fair Ladies. They're amazing. They're fearless. Uh, they are willing to take chances. My co-sponsor and I kind of joke that, you know, whatever dreams they have, it's up to us to help them make it happen. In this group, older students act as mentors to new members. They are there to help each other deal with academics, relationships, self-esteem, and other issues. A lot of our students do have like great home lives and great um, role models at home, but some of our girls don't. And so we kind of fill that need where if somebody is struggling to have a positive role model in their lives, not only myself and Miss Marola, but also the girls in our club are there to kind of guide them and give them support when they need it, which they might not be receiving outside of school. On this day, the organization set up a table outside the cafeteria. It's part of Women's Empowerment Week at the school. Our main message of this week is to like be empowered and feel comfortable in your own skin. So what we want people to take away with is just, you know, to be yourself, be happy with yourself, be confident. Confident enough to sign a pledge to appreciate themselves as they are. There's a common thread between the young women involved in this group. A lot of us are brave, we're smart, we're beautiful young girls, and we are all team players. So that's why we work together. We accomplish many things, I mean amazing things together. 
A major accomplishment includes work in the community. My Fair Ladies raised the money to provide needy students with backpacks and school supplies. It makes me feel actually like proud of myself. It makes me feel warm because I see how we're making a difference and how people are actually feeling uplifted by what we're doing and we're not just any club, you know, like we're not staying in between the walls of our school. We're actually branching out and helping our entire community. What a wonderful organization. Stealing a line from the musical. I think she's got it. I think she's got it. The group's been around for three years, already have 50 members, and I know they are going to continue to grow. Good work. And it's time now to check out other creative learning activities. Let's roll. Learning is fun. We begin at Frontier Elementary School, where fifth grade students created self-esteem shields. Each student created a shield with his or her name and then passed it to other students who added a positive word about that student. Students at Sunset Palms Elementary celebrated Literacy Week by creating a vocabulary parade. Students created posters displaying words and their meaning. Literacy Week was also lots of fun at Carver Middle School where students and teachers took a break from the classroom to step outside in the sun and read their favorite books. And students at John I. Leonard High School had an entertaining visit from the Full Sail University Mobile Experience. Students in computer, art, and TV classes were invited to experience all of the cool gadgets Full Sail had to offer inside this and outside this high-tech 18-wheel truck. Just ahead for you right here on Spotlight, a look at some of the happenings coming up in our community. Plus, a look at what makes one local school so special. We'll be right back. Too many of our kids miss too many days out of school. When they miss school, they miss out. It doesn't matter whether the absences are excused or unexcused. Low attendance can lead to low performance, from preschool to high school. Showing up is the first step for success. Make sure your kids go to school every day, on time, all day. Attendance matters. You need to go to grow. Welcome back to Spotlight on Education. You know, the students and staff at some schools think they're pretty special, and Rick, they're right. Yeah, they are, but our schools often have not only had their own vibe, but a lot of special programs, academies, and, well, choices. At Yega Middle School in West Palm Beach, the goal is to provide a diverse, academic, physical, emotional, social, and safe learning environment. Talented teachers and staff members work hard to educate, empower, and equip all students with the knowledge, skill, and character to become fulfilled, interdependent, socially responsible, and productive citizens. The way the teachers interact with the students, it's really like a home field environment. Uh, everyone gets along with each other. Anyone in Palm Beach County can be a part of the wonderful environment at Yega by enrolling in the school's pre-law academy. This program provides students with a basic understanding of the American legal system from a variety of perspectives, both civil and criminal. To be in this program is amazing. And the things we do are like vandalism walks. When we go around school and find types of vandalism and we write it down and report them to the school police officer, then we go on field trips to Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office and courts and go to lecture series. And students can be a part of the Pre-Culinary Academy. These middle school students learn about food preparation, safety, nutrition, and jobs related to the food industry. Administrators say their goal is to make every student feel connected to the school through participation in teams, clubs, and activities. Students also get connected thanks to technology. There are laptops, desktop computers, or iPads in every classroom, helping these Yega students achieve their academic goals. The arts are also important at Yega Middle School, from the visual arts to the performing arts. The Yega Band competes in local competitions. There's a good feeling about the campus and 
kids in the classroom. At Yega Middle School, the motto is cultivating seeds of sustainability for the next generation. The School District of Palm Beach County, your best choice. Time now to check out our community calendar. Enjoy some fun in the sun while supporting students. The Strides for Education Beach Bash Dash and Barbecue takes place Saturday, February 25th. The two-mile run starts at 9 a.m. at Loggerhead Park in Juneau Beach. Register at stridesforeducationpbc.org. Make plans to attend the Palm Beach International Film Festival Student Showcase of Films. It's Florida's largest student film competition. This event takes place March 10th at Lynn University. Find out more at pbfilm.com. March 31st is the deadline for the Palm Beach County Property Appraiser's Office Scholarship Awards Program. Students must live in Palm Beach County and have a minimum GPA of 3.0. Apply online at pbcgov.com or for more information, call 561-355-3230. Do you have a story you want us to know about? Feel free to send it to goodnews at palmbeachschools.org. And that's it for this week's edition of Spotlight on Education, brought to you by the Education Network. Keeping you informed.